Hello folks, I'm Dean with Dean's Woodworking. Welcome to the shop. Y'all come on in and make yourself comfortable. Today, we're going to turn a hollow farm. This right here, we'll see how dry the wood is once we get into it a little bit. It's been setting for a while, but I have a feeling that it may still be pretty wet. So we'll decide whether we're gonna be rough turning this or finish turning this as we go, okay? Let's see, we've got it round, so we'll go from there. At this point, I'm going to grab a 5 8 inch bowl gouge with a 16 inch handle. That'll give me a little bit of leverage. And we're just going to straighten out these ends. So what I did there is I got that uh, end fairly level. We've got some uh, inclusions up here, but that's okay. Those will, uh, those will disappear. We're going to mark for a tenon here. So we're going to use our stronghold chuck with the number three jaws on it today. So that gives us a pretty good size tenon. And when you're doing this, you want to make sure that only the side closest to you on top of the tool rest actually touches the wood. If that side touches, it's going to throw it right back in your face. Or as I once heard Jimmy Clues say one time, it's going to stick right in your neck. Now, I don't know how he knew it was going to stick in your neck, but you know what? That's a pretty good guess. So we're going to go ahead and cut our tenon now. We go right in, right up to that line. And what we will do just to square that off is I will grab my three quarter inch skew. And all we're doing with this is just defining that corner right there. We're using it as a scraper. We're coming in and making that corner. And then because those are pretty much straight jaws, we don't want a whole lot of uh, dovetail on that. You can have a little bit. They don't have to be absolutely straight, but you don't want much. Okay, so we have got this round. We've got it in the chuck. We're gonna go ahead and start doing a little bit of shaping at this point. Again, I am keeping the uh, tail stock up. There's absolutely no reason to remove it at this point. We're going to go ahead and take a cut across this end here just to flatten that out a little bit. Now at this point we're probably turning at about 700 RPMs and I don't have a digital readout. So I can't be completely accurate with that. But according to the dial, that's about where we're at. And we're going to go ahead and start shaping this side too. Okay, we're going to leave that to where it's just a little bit larger than the chuck there. And then we'll go ahead and start shaping this on down. And we'll leave quite a bit there just to, uh, just to give us support. 
Let's see what we're running into. We're running into something that's chipping awfully bad here. Yeah, it's a little knotter of some sort there. And looks like we got us a bug. Or we have half a bug left, let's put it that way. Means it's either on the wall or I'm wearing it at this point. So we're going to go ahead and turn in below that. We'll leave about an inch there. Okay, let's see how we're looking now, see how much of that we got on past. Yeah, we've got a little bit of a hole right there. We're going to bring this down a little bit anyway, so we'll see how that... Okay. So you saw that gouge catching and pulling and I've got a 16 inch handle on that. What was happening as I was getting into this end grain right here, I don't know if you can see it from that camera angle, you can see it right in here and that camera angle how it was chipping out of that. So once you start hitting that end grain, uh, things get pretty dicey real quick. We're going to go ahead and round this off some more. I'm probably going to try to come in here a little bit see if we can get rid of whatever this is this little inclusion if it doesn't go away pretty quick we'll just leave it add a little bit of character there maybe we'll do, try just a little bit of shear scraping right here let's take a look at that this is pretty close to what I had in mind. Now the bottom of this is going to go on down into here, but we're going to leave this portion here right now for support. And we're going to go ahead and leave that in there. We'll, we'll see how that works out. Okay, let's take a look here. I think we are ready to go ahead. We're going to drill into this. Okay, let's double check our tape and see if we're where we want to be. And I believe we are. This is a fairly large Forstner bit. It's an inch and a half bit. And I have an extension on it as well. So we're not gonna get in a big hurry. We're just gonna take this a little bit at a time. And we're getting a lot of movement out of that Forstner bit because it is so far out there and it is in an extension. 
with this it really doesn't matter because we're going to be hollowing the whole thing out anyway. Some of you may be wondering what speed I'm running this Forstner bit in here. It's running between four and 500. Again, that's guessing on the dial. Okay, folks, so we got it drilled. I took the air compressor and blew it out good. So we got all the dust and debris out of there. And now we're gonna start hollowing. What we're gonna try and use today is a set of turning tools. Uh, they're McNaughton tools. You can tell by the uh, patina on them that I don't use them a whole lot. That one's a fairly straight tool. And then we've got a couple of different radius here. This one will get in real close and this one, uh, kind of our second use and then the, the one that will get right up in on that edge. So we're going to go ahead and start hollowing this out. I am not going to show you guys 30 minutes of setting here hollowing chips out, but I will be back and forth and kind of show you the steps that I use and we'll get this thing hollowed out, okay? Now first thing we want to do is we want our hollowing tool to be pretty much dead center and so I have got my tool rest where we are pretty close to dead center there. So we're at uh, about 500. We're going to go ahead and speed this thing up. Let's get up. That should be about seven, 800 right there. I'm going to put a piece of tape on this so you guys can see when we're at the bottom. So when that tape is even with the mouth there, the tool is inserted all the way to the bottom. And that way, that'll give you guys a visual there as well. Okay, let's go ahead and stop. It's always a good idea to stop this before you blow it up. And you don't want your face in front of that when you turn that compressed air on either. We're making some pretty good headway there. Always want to be careful when you're sliding that tool in. And when you're sliding it out, there's the bottom. And there's where we've cut, that's how deep we've cut so far. Okay, it's gonna be time to change from to a cutter with a little more curve in it. Time to let number two hop in there and see what she can do. One thing with this one, you need to back off and really you should be back here because that tool, see how it's pulling and it'll want to twist in your hand. So what we're going to do is we're going to back up here so that when I'm in there, the flat part of the tool or the non-curved part is on the tool rest. So we're pretty good to about right here. It's this up here that we're still working on. Just, just about a finger's reach in there.
Okay, and we're gonna switch one more time to the final cutter. So the one we're putting on now here has the most curve in it. And that's the one we'll use to finish up that last little bit there. Okay, so now with this one, I can move the tool rest a little bit closer because the bend doesn't go so far back. We're gonna be cleaning up this area right in here. Okay, folks, that's done it for the hollowing. Now we can go ahead and finish shaping this outside. And really, there's not a whole lot of shaping to do to the outside. I'm going to take this down just a little bit right here. I brought the cone up in there. It's just touching. Again, not a lot, just touching. Okay, so I've got my one inch skew here. And my plan is to just come right back here and make a... Nice little slicing cut coming right down and this should eliminate a whole lot of sanding. So that is just as slick as it can be right there. And then again, we're going to catch our bevel. And right there. Okay, we're ready to do some sanding here. And I've had a million questions over the sandpaper I used. So while I was at SWAT, I picked up some of this foam back sanding paper. Why? Because I, it's real flexible. And I think it'll do as good a job as the other stuff I've been using. Now, I've got a good supply of the other stuff. However... I hate using something and then you guys asking me, where do I get it? And you can't get it anymore. So we'll see how this works. And if it works good, Vince was out at uh, SWAT with Wooden Wonders, I believe is the name of it. I'll look it up and put a link down uh, below, okay? So if you're interested, go down below and look. You'll find a link there to it. Vince is not a sponsor. He didn't give me any money. He didn't give me any sandpaper. I bought and paid for this, okay? So let's see how it works. Yeah, we'll start off. Man, this 80 is pretty coarse, and that really doesn't need it. So we're going to skip the 80. The next up is 120, and I'm going to hit the 120 right here because right there on that crown, we're a little bit rough. So let's see how that works. We're going to slow the lathe down to about 400. I'm going to go ahead and kick on the uh, dust collection. The noise might bother you guys. I hope not too bad. But uh, that will help keep the dust out of the uh, shop, at least some of it out of the shop. And since I hadn't used this, I want to see, oh man, nice. Yeah, that's all I need on that. Doing this mostly to see just exactly what it does here. Very nice, okay. The initial thoughts is this stuff is pretty nice. We'll see how it how it plays out in the long run. Okay. 
I'm going to sand just the inside of that. Kind of see what I mean by it being flexible, right? And we're really hitting these grits because I, I told him all of them, so I got literally all of them. And we're going from, I got 80, 120, 150, 180, 220, and I went all the way up the line. And let's go ahead and reverse this. Not really trying to sand the inside right now, just uh, want to hit, hit that top there. Hey guys, one tip, you saw my hand hit that a couple of times. Make sure that you uh, chamfer that just a bit. And guess who didn't do that? And I normally try to do that, and I advise you to do it too, fairly early on, so that uh, so you don't rub your knuckle up against that. And even with it a little rough, it might scrape you, but it won't hurt you. You leave that sucker sharp, it will hurt you. Okay, we're going to 220. You might notice I've changed the rotation on the lathe a couple of times. So I'll do a little bit of sanding going forward, and a little bit going in reverse. And I just want to try and keep that uh, keep that sharp edge there. Don't want to remove the uh, detail there. And we're going to take it back the other way. Okay, we're up to 320 now. If what I'm seeing so far is any indication on this sandpaper, I think I like it better than what I have been using. Okay, and now we're going to hit it with 400. Let's take a look at this thing. Wow. Just wow. I'm going to sand with the grain just a little bit here because that always just makes it just a little bit nicer. But honestly, looking at this, it doesn't look like we need to. See where we're at there. Unfortunately, that won't work the way we normally would use those. So we can go straight across here, and we and parting that off, and we have plenty, plenty of room. Sorry, folks, I paused the video, and so I lost just a little bit of footage. So we'll go back and repeat. I'm using a Minwax antique oil finish to uh, finish this hollow form with. I'll show you the link, the uh, can here. It's Minwax Antique Oil Finish. I'll put the link down in the description. So if you're interested, you can go down in the description, click on it. The link will be there for you. I am putting several thick coats of the Minwax Antique Oil Finish on here. 
And folks, they do not sponsor this channel. There is no sponsors to this channel. All of the expenses are right on me. I bought and paid for that finish. Nobody gave it to me or paid me to use it. I just like to let you guys know what I am using so that if you want to uh, use those products, you can. So it's for the benefit of you folks, not the, not the manufacturers. And what I do, and one of the reasons I like this finish, is I will put on multiple coats, real heavy, and as long as it's soaking in, I'll continue to put it on. Once it stops soaking in, then I'll wipe it off, I'll let it dry, and I'll put on multiple coats like that, where I put it on, let it set, wipe it off, and then I will put on several coats of real light finish and let those dry and that will give me a really glossy finish on this piece. And so that's what we're going to go for is the high gloss on this one. There's spots where it's just, the finish is just going right in like a sponge. Okay, we finished the hollow form. I finished it on the lathe. So we had the chuck attached for quite a while. So now we're ready to take the foot off. I have made a homemade jam chuck for doing this. I did a video on it, so if anybody questions how this was done, you're more than welcome to go take a look at that video, and I think if you're doing hollow forms, it might be something that you should know and be able to use. We're going to go ahead and slide this on here. Okay, bring up our tail stock. Not going to put a lot of pressure on there. Basically just just enough to kind of keep that tight and with this system It's there. It's not going anywhere Basically what we're doing at this point. We're not in a big hurry to do this We're just gonna slowly peel this away You notice we're not having any vibration or this thing stopping or anything. So we'll stop just a minute, move our tool rest up just a little bit. It's always good to stay fairly close if you can. I'm going to go ahead and start taking some cuts in. So we're real close. I want to come up just a little bit higher here. And we're making this just a little bit concave here, okay? I'm also going to take just a slight chamfer right here at the edge. I'm going to come in with a parting tool, and we're not going to part this off, but I am going to come in with a parting tool and make that just a little bit thinner. I've taken, I put way too much work in this to take a chance of it banging up against that tool rest at this point. And yeah, one one pull across there was all it took. Folks, the only thing left to do is take off this little nub, and we're going to sand that off right now. Because this isn't quite as easy to hold as a bowl is sometimes, I'm just going to put it right there and do a good portion of it just like that. So here you go, folks. One finished hollow form. Bottom is finished. It's ready to display. 
I will put the finial on it and do a uh, short video at the very end so you guys can see exactly what it looks like and get a close up of it, okay? Thank you so much for watching. Stay safe, stay healthy, and happy turning.